Hello everyone. Welcome to your next lecture of data structure. I am RVD and let's go ahead with uh, the next topic for this video. So the topic for this video is array implementation of priority queue part 2. Now as I said part 2 you know in the previous video we've already had completed uh, the working of part 1. So that was priority queue with normal insert. Okay, in this we will be looking at priority queue with normal delete. Fine, so uh, let's head towards the implementation using ID. Uh, maybe a just quick uh, uh, base about uh, the fundamental about the priority queue uh, with normal delete. As the name suggests, the delete has to be normal. So it has to be like a simple queue. So what we will be changing is the insert. So insert has to be done with the help of priority. So I have to find the place of the new element okay, as per the priority of that element and then it should be inserted. So that delete has to do no uh, different job. It just has to delete the frontmost element. Okay, so that's the whole idea. Right? So let's see the uh, implementation. Okay, so you can see this is a simple queue implementation. So what I'll do is I'll maybe save it as uh, my pq2.c. Fine. So, you know, out of that, I just have to change the insert function because rest all is going to be same. Okay. So let's move my head. I hope you people know all these things. So if you have not seen the previous video, you can very well check that. You can see the video about a simple queue implementation. So you'll get to see all these things, the, the, the basic fundamentals. Uh, as well as you can even check the video of uh, implementation of priority queue part one. So you will get to see how I've done normal insert. So there I just kept this as it is and I've only changed delete function. Here I'll be changing insert. Okay, so let's see. In insert, uh, the condition for uh, uh, the overflow would remain same. Okay, otherwise we have to start comparing. Okay, let's see what all we need. So as I generally know, maybe I will need I and J. Let's see if I need anything else. Okay. So the first for loop would be uh, for checking. Okay. So for I equals F I less than or equal to R and I plus plus. Okay. Now assume that suppose uh, let's say five is the first element which is being kept inside and uh, let's say new element is eight. So isn't it if eight is greater than five, I immediately have to break. That means my outer element that is ELE, if it is greater than Q of I, uh, I have to break because that I will be the position for the new element. And then let's see what we have to do. So uh, if ELE is greater than T arrow Q of I, then as I said, we have to break. Okay, now try to understand that I is the position of the new element as I said but there is already an element over there. So if I asked uh, that element to shift ahead, uh, it will obviously be overriding the next element. Okay, so the best part is we should start shifting from the end. Okay, so I'll have my maybe J loop because I uh, is a very significant variable here. So I'll use J loop, which will start from R, it'll come up to I and it'll keep on shifting every element to the next position so that the element at I will also be shifted ahead uh, making that uh, slot at uh, index i empty for adding the new element. Okay, I hope you understood that. Okay, uh, if at all you still are not very clear, you know, after this video, my next video will be coming up, you know, to show the stepwise working of this particular concept. So you can very well look forward to that video as well. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, how do I do the shifting. So for i equals R. So I'll be starting from end I. Okay, uh, my bad. I already said that we shouldn't use uh, I loop because I is a significant variable. So we should use J. So J starts with R, J greater than or equal to I and J minus minus. Okay, now see, uh, initially my first value of J is going to be R. I want it to get shifted to next one that is J plus one. Okay, so as we have the style of writing in programming, so Q of J plus one is supposed to get Q of J 
j okay so now let us try to check the first value of j is r so r plus 1 will get r perfect then obviously the next value will be r minus 1 will be uh, uh, sorry r will be uh, getting r minus 1 and so on it, it keeps on shifting the last value of j is going to be i so i plus 1 will get i and perfect so the slot i will be made vacant after this particular shifting so that's the place where i'm supposed to shift or place the new element which is coming in and you can clearly see that one element got added extra and uh, th that's the reason obviously all elements got shifted and you know your r points to the last element so you can clearly see that my r is not now pointing to the last it will be pointing to the second last because elements got shifted so i also have to increment r okay so uh, that's it that's the logic so i found the correct place for my new element uh, by comparing once i got that place I started shifting the element from the back so that that particular slot, the place, gets empty and the new element got placed. Uh, the last step obviously is to increment R because one element got added. Fine. So let's check quickly. Uh, uh, I hope you know that the remaining program is quite similar. Even all my functions are going to be same. Okay. So we have a wonderful main function already written. Okay. So I'm making use of all these things. Okay. So let's start. Fine. So if I just check delete, it says Q underflow, which is perfect. If I say Q front, it's going to say Q empty, which is also perfect. Okay. Uh, display will also again say Q empty. So all the other things are working fine. Let's see insert. So let me first insert five. Obviously, it'll get inserted at the beginning. Now next, uh, suppose I want to insert three. Okay. It'll get inserted after five. Now you might say, sir, it is now not obviously showing me. Uh, the effect because 3 got inserted after that but that is because 3 has got a lesser priority now let me uh, uh, add let's say 8 which is a highest priority out of the current one so that should be inserted at the beginning okay that's the logic we are we have written let's check so insert 8 and that's it no no that proves it so let me uh, insert now uh, 7 okay so insert 7 perfect Okay, I guess uh, as per our style, now one more element is possible because we've kept the size as max. You know, you can anytime increase that size if you want to do more testing. That's not a big deal as such. Okay, so let me uh, add, uh, let's say, uh, 4. So it should go between 5 and 3. Okay, so insert 4. Perfect. Okay, uh, the rest of the functions, you know, Q front will work properly. Display will make it to display. Okay, now delete. Delete obviously has got a simple job. It's like a priority queue delete. Uh, sorry, it's like a simple queue delete. It is going to delete the frontmost element. But don't you think even if it deletes the frontmost element like a simple delete, it is still deleting the highest priority element. So the, the overall system is nothing but a priority queue and that to descending priority queue. Fine, so let's try that also, which will complete the cycle. Yes, so you can see the deleted element is eight, seven, four, uh, sorry, five, Four, three Q empty and then Q underflow. Fine, so it's working really fine. I hope uh, that uh, gives you a clear idea about uh, how to implement uh, the priority queue. Uh, the part two indicates uh, priority queue with normal delete. Fine, so uh, just to conclude again. So in this video, we had seen how to implement a priority queue using normal delete. That's the second part, and we say part two. Fine. I tried my best that you understand the uh, implementation really well. But as I said earlier also, if at all you still have some doubt or you want to make it more clear, okay, the next video after this video which I'll be uploading would be the working of priority queue part 2 that is priority queue with normal delete. Fine. So that's it for uh, this video. Thank you and happy learning.